Good day to you all. I welcome you all once again to the mathematics class. And the, uh, the topic uh, that is the current topic we are talking about is the laws of indices. And the aspect of it we are discussing is what is termed the initial equation. Close to 10 questions have been solved so far on the initial equation, all because it has many facets. It has many faces and it's somehow tricky. It comes in different forms, different ways, different patterns. So, and that has been the reason why so many questions have been solved. And the aspect of it we are solving this time around is the case, or let me say the situation whereby each, uh, all the numbers given to us is not possible for us to do it, to express them all having the same base. In fact, some of those number given will not be what able to express in index form and that is the last aspect of what we want to do in indices so and we already have the question that we want to solve for this class so the question at this moment is we you solve for x that is we should find the value of x in this case finding the value of x here means the first thing we want to do is to check if it is possible that each of the number given to us here can be what can be expressed in the same base. Just like you can see that this one has the base of 3, this one has the base of 3, but it remains this way. Is it possible for us to express this 12 as a number that has what? The base of 3. So, for us to get the clear picture of that, what we are going to do is let us pick 12, let us divide it until it gives the value of 1 by. This is this we used to divide it. Divide it. So we use 3 as a factor. That is the only number we want to use to divide it. If by using 3 to divide 12, and at the end of the day, I have the value of 1, then it shows you what 12 can also be expressed, having, yeah, can also be expressed in index form, having the base of what? Of 3. So let us try it. So 3 in 12 is 4. Now, when I say 3 in 4, First thing is, I want the number I will use to divide it to be the factor, the factor of this thing and it should give me nothing like remainder. So with, with this we can see that it is not possible to express this word in index form. So once it is like that, then what we are going to do is, we make, we go back to these numbers we have in here. Let's go and re adjust these numbers. We give it uh, uh, a new name. And with that, we'll be able to do what to arrive at what we have to do. And what we are going to do in that situation is the power you are having here, this power we are having here, we want to break it down to its basis. That is, we want to break it down to its what to its root. When I have 3 raised to the power 2s plus 1, something was solved in order to get this value. Something was solved in order to get the value of 3 raised to the power x plus 2. So we want to return this into the question that was solved in order to get 3 raised to the power 2x plus 1. So doing that means 2x here means x plus x. So to expand it means this becomes 3 raised to the power x multiplied by 3 raised to the power multiplied by 3 raised to the power x. Then this plus 1 also means multiply by 3 raised to the power 1. Theta for this one, I have it as 3 raised to the power x multiplied by 3 raised to the power 2, which is equal to 12. Now, when we look through this thing critically, we can observe that something is common here, and that thing is what 3 raised to the power x in indices. In, in indices, whereby we are unable to express at least a number in index form if you now have something common like this those common term those common thing those common indexes we have here is going to what to be given the name so we can assume any letter to be what to be the name one this thing to be and that's the only way by which we can have what solution to this thing. so we can say that let m is equal to 3 raised to power x that is anywhere we come across 3 raised to power x we substitute it with what? With m. So the first thing I'm having here is 3 raised to the power x, so it becomes m, followed by multiplication sign. 3 raised to the power x once again changes to what? m, multiplied by, we can see 3 raised to the power 1 means 3, that is right 3 once, plus 3 raised to the power x here again, 
So it becomes what? M multiplied by. Remember, the meaning of 3 raised to the power 2 means 3 should be repeated 2 times. So 3 times 3, that means 9 is equal to 12. So now to continue. So I'm going to M multiply by M times 3. That gives 3M squared plus M times 9 gives 9M is equal to 12. And the mere looking at this shows that uh, this thing will lead to what? A quadratic equation. So it is now very important we what? We rewrite this thing in standard quadratic equation pattern. So that is, the one having highest degree will be in the front, followed by the one having the degree of 1, followed by the constant, and it has to be equal to what? To 0. So that becomes 3m squared plus 9m minus 12 is equal to 0. But when we look at this number once again, we can see that something is common to them all. So that thing that is common to them all, we use it to divide throughout. So 3 is here, we can see 3 here, we can see 3 here. So we divide all through by 3, by 3, by 3. So when 3 cancel 3 here, I'm left with m squared plus 3 in 9. I have 3m minus 4 is equal to 0. Now we can solve this thing quadratically. And you can see that there are many ways to solve the quadratic equation, but the aspect of it we are going to talk about is what? The factorization method. Another factorization method, what we have to do is to pick the coefficient of m squared here. We multiply it by the last digit here, that is the constant term. So 1 is the coefficient here, 1 multiplied by 4 gives 4. So I now need factors of 4, that when I manipulate it, it will give me the value of what? Plus 3. That is, it will give me the coefficient of m. So, what are the factors of 4 that we have? I know if I say 4 times 1, I can get 4. And also if I say 2 times 2, I can get 4. But how can I manipulate either of the two in order to get this mini number? How can I get 3? So it's only when I say plus 4 minus 1 that I can get that. So there is no way I can adjust this one to get 3. So this is not possible yet. It's only when I adjust this, this will by saying plus 4 minus 1 that I'm going to have plus 3. So when I go back to this place, I now have m squared plus in preposition of this 3m, so this is what we want to represent it. So that becomes plus 4m minus m minus 4 is equal to 0. And when you look at this thing, we can see m is common. So I'm going to say that m into what am I having here left? m plus 4 minus when you look at this, it seems there is nothing common. So when it seems nothing is common, then we assume one is what? What is common to them? So that's going to be 1 into m plus 4, which is equal to 0. Remember, whatever you have inside this bracket must be exactly what you have inside this bracket. So if this is m plus 4, this also has to be m plus 4. So this can be m plus 1, this is m minus 4. That is a signal that what? There is an error in our words, in our workings. So in order to continue with this, so I am going to look for what is common once again. I can see m plus 4 is common to the two. So m plus 4 into what I'm having left, the m and the minus 1 here. So m minus 1 is equal to 0. Now solving this thing means this is equal to 0 or this one is equal to 0. So m plus 4 is equal to 0 or m minus 1 is equal to 0. Here, to get m here means I solve this equation. So when I solve the equation, m is going to be 0 minus 4 or m is equal to 0 plus 1. And m here gives minus 4 or m gives the value of what? y. But what we have to find in this question is to solve for x and not for m. But M was introduced in order for us to be able to provide solution, provide solution to this thing. All because we were unable to do what? Express this in index form. And that was the reason why we assumed that time that M is still by X. So we now go back to this area where we make the assumption by saying that but M is equal to 3 raised to the power X. So which means the value of M here. The value of m here, okay, let me put it this way. The value of m here is equal to 
3 raised to power x or the value of m here is equal to 3 raised to power what? 3 raised to power x. So <coughs> there is no further solution here. How do we call this a negative number? Uh, there is no such negative. It is, is it possible to express this form in index form? Since it is not possible to express this form in index form, no further solution with this one. So that means let's check this one to give there is a solution with this one. But you know it is possible to express y here in index form. So to express it in index form is to call the theory raised to power zero. Remember from one of those basic concepts we learned in the laws of indices was that anything having the power of zero is equal to one. And now that we have one, I'm going to adjust it to the base of three. When I when it has the base of three, what power will it have to turn it toward to one? So that is why I said theory raised to power theory raised to power zero one is equal to theory raised to power x here. And from here we can see we have common base. So base cancel the base. So therefore the value of x which we are asked to find is equal to zero. Thanks for joining the class.